Pranam sir for accepting our invitation and being here with us today. So since we all know COVID has changed our lives and this world and has definitely left us all traumatized. The world which we knew has gone like forever. It is not going to return the way it was before 2020 or I would say in the 2019 which the world we were in which we were living which in world which we were living. So but there is one thing which haven't changed and that is the human behavior. The behavior of helping others but you know this behavior has also left us in a question that if countries are still looking forward to the old ties and policies they once had with one another so the introducing you to the today's topic of the webinar it is the effect of pandemic on india's foreign policy and for this discussion we have a special guest dr parvez alam sir assistant professor political science department amu so now, without further ado, I would like to invite over Ms. Sejil. Over to you, Sejil. Thank you so much, Devyani. So, are you guys interested in international relations? I'm sure that most of you are. Have you ever wondered how this pandemic affected the foreign policy of India? If no, then you are on the right place. A very good afternoon to our honorable guest speaker, Dr. Parvez Alam, sir from Political Science Department, my benevolent executive board members, a lovely audience. I am Sejil Upatyai from Second Year Political Science. I'll be introducing you the agenda of our club, work that we have done in past months, our future plans, and to give a heartiest welcome to our newest and leading members. So finally, after going through three complicated stage of selections out of 60, these wonderful nine people have matched all the criteria that we have set. Their names are as follows. Tosifa Shaheen from Assam, Rida Nashid Khan from Lucknow, Ered Bhatt from Kashmir, Akshansh Rathod from Uttar Pradesh, Tarunum Parveen from Bihar, Mehlu from Kashmir, Sara Fatima from Ayodhya Uttar Pradesh, Ikra Bashir from Kashmir, last but not the least, Mr. Jhangir Farooq, from Kashmir. With this exuberant panel, we aim to realize our logo, which is learn together and lead together. Which request you to keep questioning because that's the only way to develop. And with this aim, we provide an environment for students to discuss and research. Above all, we hope to provide a platform for interaction between the students and teachers. It will also give us a platform where we can exchange ideas, and learn from each other, listen to the problems, come to the solutions, an opportunity to develop skills like leadership, teamwork, and other than that, this club is to increase the understanding of political science research, analytical skills, including the ability to think critically, construct logical arguments, to collect, analyze, interpret evidences, data, and to formulate reasonable conclusions. In the long run, we also have plans to collaborate with various societies, associations of political science, and other universities. We have plans to organize events, youth parliaments, various webinars with experts, skill development workshops and fields, weekly podcasts on recent topics, and critically analyzation of government policies monthly. So these are some plans, or let's say, aim that we have. But by God's grace and the consistent hard work of our panel members, in these four months, we have organized two webinars, two discussions, a workshop on research methodology. On our tele Telegram channel, we have, we have 200 members who have walked with us on this journey of educating themselves, developing together, who are benefiting of having more than 100 books, various articles, reports by renounced organizations, daily quizzes, quotes by various political thinkers, and we also invite ideas for any event on any topic if you want to collaborate with us. We have prepared reports by circulating forms in second and third year students about their suggestions and views about syllabus, their overall development, about teachers and resources. We prepare handouts after every webinar or any discussion. We put it on the website so that everybody can easily access it. 
we have our own YouTube channel we, where we put all the videos of discussions and webinars. Even this video will be uploaded over there. So we hope that soon ahead, hard work will be recognized and we will be authorized by department as soon and as possible. And with this inspiration, I would like to introduce you all to the topic of this webinar, which is how the pandemic is affecting the foreign policy of India. On this topic, our guest speaker, Dr. Parvez Alam Sir will be enlightening us and will motivate our new members. I will not take you much time. Let's move forward. I request Ms. Devyani to take over and thank you so much for listening to me patiently. And yes, for books and other things, you can join our Telegram channel. You can go to our YouTube. You can visit our websites. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Sejal, for giving us this little, but of course, precious introduction. Before moving forward, I want to make you people aware about our Q&A session, which we will be having towards the end of this webinar. So if you guys have any question regarding the topic, you can pop your question in the chat box and we'll get them answered. And in case you miss any topic or sorry, any part of this webinar, you uh, we, we are recording this webinar and you will get the link and it will also be uploaded on our YouTube channel. So you can get it over so there. Now I would like to call Mr. Harun to give us a brief introduction about our team. Yes. Moving forward, what do you I want to make you people aware about? Assalamualaikum. To one and all present here. It's my honor to introduce today's chief guest, Dr. Parvez Alam. Is currently an assistant professor at Aligarh Muslim University. He has also taught conflict studies at Jamia Millia Islamia. He's a regular columnist to various news portals and newspapers such as Kashmir Times and has contributed to edited volumes and journals. His area of research is of secularism and ethics and his interests ranges from cultural politics and anthropology to South Asia and international political economy. Currently, he's working on Chantal Murphy's conception of agnostic pluralism and Carl Schmitt's idea of the political as his PhD dissertation from the country's one of the prestigious universities, that's University of Delhi. Apart from this, he has done his BA in arts at Jawaharlal Nehru University, MA in politics and international relations at Pondicherry University and in international studies on a study of religious minorities in Pakistan at Jamia Millia Islamia. I, Harun Ibn Hassan, on behalf of the political club, want to convey my heartfelt gratitude to Sir for accepting our invitation and request him to light and enlighten all of us, especially our newly inducted students in the club with his preached words. Thank you. Hello. Uh, am, am I audible, uh, Sejal or Harun? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. You are audible. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, thank you so much uh, for having me on this. Uh, panel uh, for, for this webinar on a very pertinent uh, topic that is uh, India's foreign policy during pandemic. Uh, before moving to the topic, uh, let me also uh, heartily and warmly uh, welcome all the freshers uh, who have been inducted uh, uh, in, in, in the very uh, uh, prestigious University of India, I would say, Aligarh Muslim University, and also they are uh, in in uh, in one of the best department of our university, Department of Political Science. Uh, Political Science Department has a history of, uh, of producing, uh, uh, I mean, great uh, alumni and alumna uh, such as uh, Muhammad Ayub who is Professor Emeritus at uh, Michigan University, uh, our uh, former Vice President of India, Hamid Ansari, 
was um, a student of Department of Political Science. The great political scientist uh, uh, Zoya Hassan was uh, from, from our department. Uh, many uh, civil servants, uh, you know, uh, were passed out from uh, our, our Department of Political Science. Uh, many civil society activists are still working uh, into the area of uh, uh, human rights who graduated uh, from uh, Department of Political Science. So you all are part of the legacy, part of a historical uh, 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 legacy which our department has uh, produced and I am hopeful that with your sheer hard work and, and, and also uh, great, uh, you know, uh, intellectual ability, uh, you would also be counted as one of the great uh, uh, alumni of, of uh, Aligarh Muslim University uh, in general and Department of Political Science in particular. Uh, I'm, I'm really very happy uh, uh, that, you know, uh, at least, uh, uh, you know, uh, political science club uh, has taken this initiative uh, is uh, some kind of therapeutic mechanism uh, because uh, the time we are living in uh, we all are traumatized we all are saddened uh, we uh, you know we we all must have lost uh, you know um, I mean, members of our extended families or relatives, uh, you know, and and I mean, you know, we should uh, we should empathize with each other, uh, you know, to console each other uh, in this uh, in this hard time that we are facing. And COVID-19 has really brought us at the juncture where uh, where. Uh, I mean, without having uh, really, uh, you know, uh, human to human relations, without having uh, some some kind of, you know, bondings between us, we cannot really uh, survive or we cannot really move on from this uh, difficult phase of our life. I mean, at least, uh, I mean, I am, I'm a bit, uh, you know, emotional at this particular juncture where uh, my, I mean, I have lost three, uh, you know, extended, uh, you know, uh, family members uh, in, in the last uh, one and a half month. And and uh, and the moment I think about others, the way I am feeling, I'm, I'm really, uh, uh, I'm, I'm really, you know, uh, sort of, uh, 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 having a uh, lot of uh, uh, empathy uh, and, and also I am standing in solidarity with all those people who are uh, struggling. So uh, with a brief uh, sort of, uh, uh, you know, introduction of the Department of Political Science, I would also uh, say that uh, those newcomers who have joined they are kind of, you know, a very fresh entrant to the, uh, you know, uh, Department of Political Science. Uh, several kind of concepts, uh, you know, would be um, unraveled in front of your eyes, uh, which you might not be acquainted with. Uh, you know, uh, I mean, till plus two, uh, you had a very small world, uh, you know, and then you mastered uh, into that small world and and you imagine yourself as uh, you know everything but the moment you enter into the university space you uh, the realization of uh, feeling uh, some kind of that I am you know I'm part of a universe I'm a little creature of that universe that feeling of littleness uh, would rather uh, be also a very blissful uh, because that will uh, provide some kind of way, high, way ahead uh, 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 
you know reason for you that you would be rather adding a lot of knowledge into the corpus uh, 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 which which you are having you know i would also say that do not only restrict yourself to the uh, political science i i would urge you all uh, because the disciplines are becoming more and more uh, multidisciplinary uh, uh, i mean uh, uh, political science borrows i mean you know those uh, those students uh, who are in uh, final year or or uh, in second year they are already aware about that you know uh, political science borrows from many disciplines such as uh, you know uh, sociology uh, economics philosophy uh, and and also in current times you know uh, we also apply a lot of uh, scientific tools uh, borrowing from mathematics statistics you know uh, to make it uh, our discipline more nuanced and more un understanding you know uh, we we need to take into account all the issues which are there in front of our eyes and analyze in much more clear way to provide some kind of suggestions and solution to the uh, problem and you all are going to be part of those uh, processes uh, where policy making happens and you may be part of also the law making process as uh, as as a budding politicians or you may go to the uh, you know uh, uh, economic uh, field or or or, or in, into the businesses and uh, do a lot of other activities so you know you have to broaden your horizon you do not have to restrict yourself only to uh, knowing political science that definitely would bring a lot of uh, 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 a lot of clarity to your understanding of politics which which is happening in current times and also politics of the past but you you also have to uh, make yourself more uh, 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 sort of uh, adaptable to the uh, future uh, problems you know and and one of the thing that which we are going to discuss today uh, is is the is the lack of preparedness uh, uh, by our uh policy makers especially i would say uh you know uh, uh, the, the backbone of the uh, the indian administration uh you know and and also definitely lack of political will uh, which uh, which which has created uh, a, a kind of problem which which we all are having uh, you know it it is totally the, the onus is not only on the uh, 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 civil servants or policy makers uh, but uh, but but also the citizens of india uh, who uh, you know uh, who have not been putting uh, pressure uh, on the on the, the political expediency and and that is the reason that we are at the juncture where um, you know we uh we are struggling and now citizens of india are uh, in a way providing helping hand to uh, people and also realizing their mistake they are kind of uh, feeling some kind of angst uh, towards the uh, towards the political leadership uh, which is currently at the helm of affairs okay so uh, so i mean you know let, let us talk about the very basic uh the uh, uh, idea of uh, what is foreign policy uh, i mean you know you you all know foreign policy uh, basically uh, is is some kind of uh, of shoot or 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 you say sub discipline of of international relations uh, international relations uh, in in fact is the sub discipline of of political science okay and even now international relations has a vast area a uh, vast uh, you know uh, field 
of, of, of uh, research and vast area of uh, uh, things to cover. Uh, diplomacy is is uh, one part where you know uh, uh, it, it has almost taken a shape of the discipline. Um, you know, international history. Uh, you know, uh, uh, I mean, uh, environmental uh, uh, politics uh, and and, it, and yeah. foreign foreign policy, and and many many more other things. You know, are actually. Uh, international political economy, uh, for that matter, you know, international, uh, you know, uh, trade affairs, for that matter. So, all in all, you know, international relations, uh, you know, uh, provide some kind of uh, basic theoretical underpinnings on which, you know, the foreign policy uh, is 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 uh, foreign policy is done. Okay. Uh, we can also say that uh, international relations is more of a, a you know a theoretical uh, part where foreign uh, sorry for the inconvenience guys please be with us we'll be joining soon yeah here sir Yes, sir. You are. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He, he, he is, yeah. Hello. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Oh, yeah. Am I clear? Yes, sir. Now you. Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, so uh, I I don't know that yes. how much part of uh, the the uh, the talk gone uh, missing, but uh, nevertheless, let me uh, repeat once again. Uh, is I was giving the background of international relations, and I was saying that. Foreign uh, policy is one part of one stream of international relations, um, you know, and and foreign policy is uh, more of a praxis of international relations, wherein uh, international relations deals about so many things, and it's a vast discipline. And international relations, in a way, uh, 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 is is it also provides theoretical. Uh, you know, backgrounds of, of foreign policy, right? So uh, I, I was talking about, uh, and I'm, I'm, I'm repeating, uh, you know, uh, that uh, for any democratic state, I'm talking about here uh, for democratic state, but uh, those uh, illiberal democracies or, you know, authoritarian regimes, they also share some kind of foreign policy goals, which I'm going to stipulate, for an example, uh, number one, uh, one of the foreign policy goal for any democratic state is uh, preserving the national security, right? I mean, national security again is is in a way uh, a part of the foreign policy, but it has also taken a different uh, stream altogether, which we uh, study as 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 a different uh, uh, kind of you know uh, a paper altogether. Uh, when when you uh, go in say masters, uh, you would be studying, you know, global peace and security, um, you know, and then the foreign policy is a different paper altogether, right? So uh, international security, national security, uh, you know, it it is a very important dimension of uh, foreign policy. Another dimension is again, uh, you know, world peace. So national security for national security, states try to maximize its economic uh, you know strength as well as also military apparatus military power you know and for that you know uh, states are jostling with with each other to secure their border uh, to also maintain their internal security also uh, you know the, the kind of uh, in in 21st century the uh, issue of uh, uh, terrorism has created a lot of threat to the states, and hence uh, all the states, in a way, uh, because one of the goal of the states are to survive, you know, and for survival of this state, the states are engaged into some kind of mutual, uh, you know, uh, uh, sharing of uh, military resources, and and for that, uh, you know, they they want to preserve their 
national security then uh, then then definitely with national security with amassing lot of uh, military equipments uh, their purpose is basically to maintain or rather promote world peace it sounds more um, you know uh, paradoxical it sounds more hypocritical in a way that how through military equipment uh, states would be rather promoting world peace but it is uh, i mean it is really one of the puzzling question for uh, many of the scholars and it is the reality we cannot really do away with the reality that i mean kenneth walls for an example the scholars on international uh, 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 politics and mainly the founder of the um, you know uh, 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 neo realism uh, the school of thought within the internationalist we study a uh, realist school of thought liberal school of thought liberal slash idealist school of thought and these school of thought provide recipe towards world peace and uh, in in a way uh, kenneth wall says that many more nuclear weapon states would rather maintain some kind of world peace and in fact um, kenneth wall would rather say that you know uh the bipolarity the the bipolarity you know uh, like uh, during the cold war the bipolarity also in a way is a very very important uh, uh kind of uh, 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 you know important dimension of international politics where it can maintain some kind of world peace so we need to secure global environment that is one of the foreign policy goal for any state uh maintaining a balance of power among nations so we identify in our everyday life about you know who is our friend who is our enemy and states also in a way try to um, you know uh, try to in a way inflate that human uh, behavior for uh, human behavior of identifying friend enemy state towards the um, you know uh, even the in, to the level of state to state relations where the states also identify uh, you know uh, uh, friends and enemies okay and and uh, and and similarly they try to have alliance with those friendly states to counterbalance to counterweight uh, you know the enemy states or if they suspect the state would turn out to be enemy state in future you know and another goal in say post war situation post second war situation where democratic states have been also trying to engage and also trying to win over to those authoritarian re- regimes by promoting democratic values and human rights and similarly these foreign policy goals cannot become a win win situation until and unless we have a cooperative foreign trade and some kind of global env- involvement in international trade organization so this this is a kind of common foreign policy goal for most of the state which are having transaction into the international relations now let us talk about in the current dispensation and even during the nehruvian regime most of the foreign policy goals which i just stipulated was shared by you know uh, nehru's uh, you know uh, foreign policy and 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 one of the uh, you know one of the goal was to existence now since when uh, you know uh, uh, bharatiya janata party came into power you know uh, narendra modi uh, modi's idea of foreign policy which is also you know many uh, foreign policy analysts talk about modi's doctrine you know and that has been uh you know uh, a kind of guiding principle uh, for the modi's uh, regime uh, in, in, into the foreign policy domain and uh, i mean you know since the very beginning of the uh, 2014 when uh, modi became a prime minister he uh, sort of prioritized an integrated neighborhood neighborhood first uh, you know uh, 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 policy uh, also uh he wanted to leverage international partnership to promote india's domestic uh development um you know so domestic was very much ignored 
uh, you know, for for many many decades, even into the international relations and even into the domain of uh, foreign policy, uh, domestic situations and conditions were not really studied as a part of foreign policy. But in current times, for the last two decades, the domestic issues. I mean, you know, for an example, what is happening in United States internally. is equally important uh, for any other state to have you know a very close look towards uh, those uh, situations and conditions similarly what is happening inside australia or what is happening inside you know china or uh, you know uh, singapore or even myanmar that has been also shaping you know the uh, relations with the states you know that what kind of states what is happening say uh, in 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 i um, mean you know, uh, palestine for that matter that is kind of you know having a very very uh, 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 important impact on the other states that how they are going to shape their foreign policy accordingly so narendra modi was in a way also trying to leverage that international uh, partnership to promote india's domestic development you all remember that you know the japan was providing the technology for bullet train uh, you know and and similarly many other technologies you know uh, 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 i mean memorandum of understanding was signed uh, uh, you know uh, between india and united states and other european countries when narendra modi uh, came to power also uh, you know we had you know look east policy narendra modi uh, you know made it that a multipolar balance of power in indo pacific calling it act east policy that we were looking east but now we have to act east okay and then also because we all know that uh, it it has been a very strained relationship between india and pakistan and for that uh, india wanted to sideline uh, you know uh, pakistan because of uh, pakistan as a state supporting terrorism okay and india wanted to dissuade pakistan because of supporting uh, terrorism and also india wanted to have you know democratization of uh, you know international bodies uh, you know and and india wanted to have its advancing representation and leadership on matters of global governance such as even climate change and india also in a way uh, hosting you know climate talks um, you know and and that is that happened even during the pandemic so now let us come to the pandemic i mean i mean we all know that what a uh, pandemic is the kind of you know uh, infectious disease you know uh, all over the world and these kind of pandemics has been happening even prior to covid 19 uh, let me check if am i audible otherwise you know it's uh, difficult uh any one of you yes sir yes sir you are audible okay okay thank you so much so uh yeah so you know uh, i mean you you all do not have memory of that but there was um, you know sars uh, which which was which was con considered as a public health emergency um, in united states and many other states and 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 that was in fact uh, impacting uh many other states where the uh, traveling between the states was kind of banned uh, for limited duration of time similarly you know ebola virus came even during the ebola virus you know many more uh, precautions were taken by the states and even india in uh, i mean ebola virus was kind of found in uh, uh, kerala there was uh, nepa virus uh, uh, even before that we had several kind of epidemics uh, like uh, you know cholera and uh, the spanish flu which was uh, which which happened in uh, 1920s uh, even prior to uh, you know uh, 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 the spanish flu there has been uh, several uh, you know uh, in infectious uh, uh, diseases uh, which which actually engulf you know uh, many parts of the uh i mean you know world right so uh, this pandemic particularly is happening when we 
we are mastering over the uh, i mean you know science and technology we have been uh, you know moving to mars we have been uh, you know sending our missions to uh, moon we have been uh, stationing at the international space station we have you know achieved so many milestone in science and technology and this little virus uh, was uh, i mean uh, not a big challenge initially uh, you know uh, uh, i mean assumed by many uh, many states who bragged about that you know uh, i mean uh, we would rather overcome uh, uh, this, this this virus now it is very important in foreign policy when you study foreign policy it is very important to have a timeline you know until unless you have a timeline i mean you all know that what timeline is your facebook has a timeline your twitter or social media accounts have timeline uh, and and you know it, it is very important to have a timeline in a very sequential manner we need to understand and then we will come to india particularly you know uh, for an example the virus uh, was identified uh, you know uh, 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 say in 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 wuhan province of china uh, you know in in say uh, beginning of december right uh, it was identified as uh, covid 19 it was uh, initially uh, and, and there was several kind of misinformation and disinformation regarding the virus several kind of videos circulated which created panic among people but you know we indians and also many other states were in a way uh, you know uh, uh, were not very uh, 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 i mean anxious rather uh, that what is happening in china is the china's issue and we do not have to really worry about that but yes seeing the video creates panic that what if that comes to us right so it was identified uh, in december 2019 and you know uh, and and gradually uh, after seven number of cases were doubling right uh, you and and you all know this i mean you know the pressures may not be very uh, you know acquainted with those information but at least some of the students they know that you know that there was uh, every uh, you know seven and a half days 14 days you know uh, the 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 number of cases uh, were doubling and tripling and and gradually you know uh, china became uh, you know uh, 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 i mean you know this this wuhan province especially became a, a big news where united states banned the traveling to china uh, i mean you know uh, uh, back and forth and many other states even um, india responded later but uh, many states actually uh, you know banned uh, traveling to uh, uh, china or or chinese uh, you know landing into uh, those states now uh, in united states uh, the uh, virus was uh, you know found in the mid of january uh, you know as a, as a first case on 20th of january uh, donald trump uh you know uh, uh declared public health emergency uh, identifying that this could be uh, you know uh, it's spreading very fast in uh, united states if we will not uh, contain this okay and then uh, gradually uh, we we all know that you know it is started spreading uh, india by that time was very lackadaisical about virus coming to india okay even by then many leaders of india were trying to uh, persuade the uh, you know uh, government uh, that uh, please uh, you know uh, prepare for this because what is going to come to india will be very devastating but uh, uh, by uh, health minister and many more uh, you know uh, uh, people uh, of the government uh, they uh, sort of uh, you know just brushed off uh, 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 that particular suggestion and they uh, they they sort of you know uh, credited uh, to those leaders as loud thinking okay 
and uh, by that time uh, say mid of february uh, india was preparing to uh, welcome donald trump the president of united states in one of the biggest stadium of ahmedabad called narendra modi stadium on 24th and 25th of february 23rd to 25th of february almost for 36 hours uh donald trump who had to stay in india donald trump was visiting with his crew members with almost you know 3000 personnel of the navy seal and also you know united states secret services and many more diplomats and people you know and these people were coming from the place where virus was already identified now uh you all know that in india we had a mass uh, movement which was happening in nook and corner uh, you know led by shaheen bag and many other you know uh, uh, squares of india were populated by uh, people uh, who were demand, demanding to uh, you know take back or roll back the uh, the, the the ca act okay and uh, we 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 all know that uh, just when donald trump was in india the delhi uh, riots culminated now these informations are very important these are the timeline which are very important that how india was dealing with you know uh, the pandemic which is in offing which is upcoming okay and uh, we all know that you know the riots actually uh, you know took lives uh, of innocent people in north east delhi and uh, you know and and gradually the kind of uh, communal uh, strives which were happening uh, culminated into some kind of polarization where that polarization was utilized by the the state and the government when the uh, virus was identified on i mean say 13th of march or mid of march uh, you know and then the entire owners because of that polarization government and many more people media especially took that particular uh, uh, a kind of moment to put the entire owners on tablighi jamaat okay now uh, this this particular how this has also culminated into some kind of foreign policy issues uh, this particular backlash on the uh, tablighi jamaat led to you know uh, uh, many uh, uh, sort of you know uh, hindutva foot soldiers to uh, uh, you know uh, onslaught on the muslim community now narendra modi government declared lockdown and during the lockdown this polarization was in a way utilized to sideline and also blaming the community and many more violent assertion happened in many parts of india and because of that the indian you know sort of image of secular india coexisting india uh multicultural india worldwide was tarnished because of this and then this led to many middle east countries many um, you know uh, 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 i mean you know islamic states i mean you know muslim countries especially they started sort of uh, you know uh, uh, some kind of some kind of moment uh, that uh, it is really assertion called islamophobia uh which 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 is getting uh, you know translated during the pandemic so uh, so that that happened you know within say march and april and it it continued uh, further and we also started seeing that uh, you know uh, because lockdown was introduced to uh, some kind of you know producing uh, you know uh, in the health facilities uh you know uh, and, and that that did not happen and uh, gradually we started seeing that the virus is started becoming deadly and uh, this 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 particular thing uh, uh, continued where um, india 
was not really trying to uh, uh, you know uh, bargain with any other state or or in fact by that time uh, india was helping india was becoming a helping hand to united states which was seeing you know the uh, a death ratio uh, 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 you know uh, i mean uh, leading much higher in comparison of uh, china or even italy or or, or brazil and the, the casualties uh, in in united states was much higher and india started exporting hydrochloroquine uh, uh, hcq uh, medicine which uh, in fact was appreciated uh, by uh, you know united states you know india also exported uh, hcq medicines to australia and many more uh, other states uh, but uh, you know uh, and and that was a kind of you know uh, image saving mechanism by india by uh, by 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 making uh, you know india becoming some kind of you know a regional power which can actually take uh, take care not only about neighbors but also um, uh, to the other most developed countries such as united states borrowing you know uh, uh, i mean medicines you know uh, from india that was kind of marker that was kind of moment where uh, india was considered as uh, that uh, india would not only take care of its own uh, cases but india can actually lead from the front in the mission to fight virus okay uh, also because we are talking about timeline we should also try to understand that here was china taking a leverage um, you know of the of the virus where um, in the galwan valley uh, china uh, uh, Ch china sort of you know intruded into the ladakh region where uh, where it, it i mean you know indian forces uh, tackled uh, but uh, but but it 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 was not really responded in the manner that what the posture Uh, generally uh, 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 presented by the uh, Indian government, and especially if you remember the Operation uh, uh, Balakot, just uh, after the uh, Pulwama attack, uh, you know that kind of that kind of you know uh, posture was not really uh, responded towards China, and it was more of a meekly uh, response. uh to 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 uh, to the chinese intrusion and it was a kind of impasse between um, you know uh, 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 sino indian uh, relationship we all know that india uh, i mean you know the the the, the kind of strained relationship between india and china uh, uh, has been there uh, you know uh, since india accepted the tibetan refugees and india supporting uh, the uh, the the right to self determination of uh, tibet um you know and and uh, and and this also culminates i mean let's not forget about the lockdown uh, you know which which was uh, imposed the kind of you know in uh, information lockdown which was imposed in uh, the kashmir uh, the kind of blockade uh, which which was also in a way uh seen as uh, some kind of you know uh, 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 containment of uh, you know the the any kind of any kind of assertion by the uh, uh, kashmiri uh, 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 sort of uh, you know uh, 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 right to self determination or the 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 uh, so called azadi uh, moment which which, uh, which 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 has been happening in in kashmir and uh, and on international platform uh, this particular uh, uh, information blockade was also criticized by many states uh, of india so uh, china in a way always trying to contain india into its own uh, sort of you know cocoon and india should not have influence over neighbor neighborhood and gradually that we have seen that how uh, you know during the pandemic nepal has been asserting uh, you know more vehemently uh, you know and also moving towards uh, uh, what do you call uh, you know uh, into the 
into the lap of China, you know. And similarly, uh, Maldives uh, providing a space for China to have their embassy and also uh, uh, sort of, uh, you know, uh, 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 making their uh, bases. Uh, uh, for an example, even in Iran, uh, we, I mean, you know, uh, I mean, Iran and China having a very uh, friendly relations. Uh, the Chabahar port uh, uh, is 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 met by uh, Chinese uh, support in Hambantota in Sri Lanka. Again, is is uh, supported by uh, uh, China uh, and and also Myanmar, which has been uh, you know sort of uh, uh, becoming a threat to the um, uh, security issues, uh, especially that there is traditional security non-traditional security and refugee crisis is more of a non-traditional security and i mean myanmar has been producing refugees the rohingya refugees and that refugee crisis has been kind of kind, kind of you know uh, creating problem uh, for india and china becoming silent on myanmar so india was gherawed during the pandemic only india was gherawed by chinese uh, influencers and in a way uh, India was struggling with its own issue of uh, coronavirus. By that time, uh, India wanted to respond to uh, this uh, Chinese containment uh, and, and, and for that India uh, sort of, you know, started the, I mean, you know, uh, rather reinvigorated uh, the, uh, 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 the quad uh, that that is quadrilateral security dialogue. Uh, you know uh, that that's a very very important uh, kind of uh, uh, a kind of dialogue, or we can say a kind of organization, which has not taken really shape of organization. But for the last uh, say 14 years uh, 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 since 2007, which dialogue is started, and it has been in a way. Uh, you know, uh, sometimes Australia backing out, sometimes, you know, uh, other states were uh, not showing much interest. But during the pandemic, India taking initiative and kind of, you know, bringing in, uh, you know, all the Quad members, United States, Japan, Australia, and India together, again, trying to create some kind of imagery that China must, you know, keep distance from India because India wants to uh, counterbalance or rather counterweight China uh, in in more, uh, you know, uh, 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 radical way. Uh, so that was one of the uh, one of the important posture that India tried to um, uh, uh, tried to uh, uh, emulate. But having said all these things. Uh, one of the very important point you all should remember that the uh, the failing SARC uh, in uh, South Asia, the uh, adamant or rather adversary uh, neighbors in uh, South Asia, the pandemic has created some kind of situation or condition for India, which was becoming a you know, three trillion dollar economy or four trillion dollar economy, and because of the economic powerhouse that India was emerging, many neighboring states were trying to embrace India uh, as as one of the responsible uh, neighbor or rather big brother. You know, Quad has been criticized by China, and in fact, many Indian scholars is a great game of uh, you know United States where India is actually playing into the hands of the United States because ultimately, uh, you know, emergence of India would rather, uh, you know, create problem for United States. Instead of that, India's helping or rather uh, sort of, you know, assistance would create Sino-US, uh, you know, strained relationship more stronger. A strained relationship is like, you know, two adversaries you know, having on a stronger position, right? So it is more of a United States containing China uh, through Quad, rather India imagining that, you know, India is containing China's influence into its neighbor. 
it is not like that brahma chelani and uh, uh, you know uh, happy moon jacob and many uh, other scholars have been writing about this right so what i'm trying to say here is that because of the pandemic pandemic has brought into such a loop that the economic loss that which uh, you know the down the famous i mean in famous lockdown of 21 days extended to uh, more than 40 days which has brought you know a, a, a sort of a crippling economy of india where india is moving towards minus 43% you know uh, uh, a sort of loss uh, and also hundreds and thousands of uh, you know uh, job loss in india and india would recuperate its economy it would take rather more than one decade to come to its original position where india was before covid 19 so the domestic strength was rather percolated to the level of uh, you know uh, 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 you know foreign policy where india was rather accepted uh, you know as 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 as, as, a, as a very very important player in international relations now you also see and and i will end in uh, you know uh, uh, with this uh, you you also see that uh, you know india wanted to regain that because ultimately this economic loss uh, you know uh, uh, would would be only filled uh, uh, after really vision and and also mission uh for coming you know uh, i mean at least 5 and 6 years um uh, india wanted to regain its status and image of that it is still have lot of things to deliver to the world and for that india started initiated vaccine diplomacy someone was asking about that uh and that vaccine diplomacy was rather a plot uh to uh, regain confidence of the um you know uh, 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 friendly states so india uh, wanted to win over to the african states you know smaller states where india uh, was sending vaccine started vaccines to united states india was sending uh, vaccines to many many more uh, other southeast asian states you know and it was rather some kind of face saving that you know other states should not write off india's future other states should accept that india still is not really uh, going back and india has lot of things to deliver right and that in a way uh, was creating lot of uh, 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 lot of joy and lot of uh, you know uh, uh, sort of uh, self appreciation by the government government was declaring in march that you know um, i mean we have uh, fought uh, with with uh, virus and 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 virus is now gone and we can you, you know we can uh, we can be back to normal life very soon and uh, all these covid protocols will go away and we will resume our normal life uh, very soon right uh and 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 in fact uh, uh i mean government was bragging about uh, uh uh you know this vaccine diplomacy that we have been a responsible uh, uh, uh power and uh, the the matri philosophy the the, uh, the 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 solidarity and all these things uh, teaches india that you know we should uh, take lead to provide help to those uh, needy states that's that's a very important thing that's well and taken okay but not at the cost of our own indian lives okay uh, that vaccine which was produced the tikka utsav which happened where it was uh, said that you know all indians would be vaccinated in coming two and a half years where you know uh, first uh, 45 and up, uh, above age uh, group uh, would be vaccinated and for that you know modi government has started tikka utsav and just before the tikka utsav happened you know the kind of cases started sort of spiraling and doubling and tripling and india was seeing more than you know mid of april india started seeing i mean 
four and a half lakh cases, uh, which since pandemic has started was the highest. And gradually, the death rates also uh, started expanding and then, then the issue of oxygen, you know, that engulfed so many innocent lives that we could not imagine that hospital facilities, the bed, of non-availability of bed, non-availability of medicine, and all these things in a way created, uh, I mean, a kind of, you know, panic uh, among citizens where, uh, you know, people were denied uh, bed into the hospitals and people were unable to get, uh, you know, uh, I mean, all those injections, uh, those steroids which they needed for saving lives, um, you know, uh, and this entire health system collapsed, uh, you know, where people had to come uh, to the front to help each other, to provide some kind of lead on the WhatsApp statuses and also on Facebook, Twitter, you know, and people started sort of uh, using those means and mechanism to help each other. Now, again, one of the foreign policy uh, 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 issue comes here, you know, which is very important, and um, I, I would I would end there. Uh, you know, it has been kind of you know tacit uh, agreement within Indian administration, or rather into the uh, foreign policy domain, that India would not be accepting any kind of foreign aid, okay, because. One of the Nehruvian motives and goals was to make India self-reliant. You know, it was the mission of Nehru. You know, in in today's time, in our time, that what we call it Atmanirbhar, Nehru said it much. Uh, um, you know, uh, uh, before. Uh, you know, almost in 1950s, Nehru was saying that you know uh, we need to make India self-reliant, and for that. Nehru, uh, you know, was getting assistance, you know, uh, uh, for Soviet assistance, you know, to uh, establish factories, I mean, you know, making dam, uh, uh, sort of, you know, um, uh, uh, I mean, instituting all Indian Institute of Medical Sciences, uh, uh, in Indian Institute of Technologies, you know, many more, uh, you know, uh, uh, institutions which we glorify today was uh, the uh, a product of Nehruvian regime. So one of the Nehruvian motives and goal was to make India self-reliant, okay? Uh, even Modi regime, during the uh, uh, mid of the lockdown, uh, when uh, uh, Narendra Modi came on our television at eight o'clock, he said that, you know, we are pumping uh, 10 lakh crore into, um, uh, uh, you know, a sort of uh, Indian market. Okay, and that 10 lakh crore would be uh, making India Atmanirbhar. That Atmanirbhar is actually self-reliance. Okay, so this will make India Atmanirbhar from global to go local. That was the call by our, uh, you know, beloved uh, leader, okay, to making India Atmanirbhar. Pumping uh, this, you know, uh, uh, this was a tacit kind of uh, agreement by all the regimes, including uh, 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 Manmohan Singh's uh, government, okay? The Manmohan Singh, during the Manmohan Singh government only, this idea uh, was initiated. Uh, we had Kerala flood. We did not ask for assistance, though Dubai was, uh, I mean, of course, United Arab Emirates was extending that we would be giving 550 crore to the, uh, you know, to, to uh, uh, as a foreign aid to uh, India to tackle the Kerala flood. India did not accept it. India did not accept any other, uh, you know, uh, during uh, Uttarakhand uh, uh, flood or even, uh, you know, several uh, uh, earthquakes happened. Uh, so this was kind of India's strength that post-1991, India was leading towards prosperity, okay? And the second wave, which we are struggling even in this time, you know, 
this second wave has dented that image of atmanirbhar bharat where after gap we have started accepting of foreign aid not from united states only or japan or australia the oxygen concentrators the oxygen cylinders but many more other smaller states which are not even into the category of least developed countries even they have been sort of assisting us that assistance shows some kind of solidarity with india that is well taken but this also is a very consequential for kind of you know future of india the india which was emerging power house of south asia the uh, you know uh, so this this is the this is the alteration into the foreign policy domain that after 17 years we have started accepting foreign aid and we are now not up there but rather we are there but on uh, you know depending on other states okay and that you know we vaccine diplomacy slightly also worked for india uh, when india was in need but let us also see that the quad members and especially america as a leading member these friendly states have been turning their back on india united states denial of raw materials to develop the second batch of vaccine production during second wave right and this is something you know uh, i mean you know the india uh, in 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 coming days because pandemic is still continuing and we do not know that till what time pandemic will continue but the kind of logic given by biden administration was to safeguard americans first right so even america such a developed economy america which can survive on its own america is such atmanirbhar that which atmanirbhar america was receiving scq by india atmanirbhar america was uh, you know um, um, asking for uh, help okay and still atmanirbhar america uh can survive for uh, 50 years and 100 years on its own right yet america is saying americans first okay and we indians instead of vaccinating our population were donating vaccines okay so not only america but even australia closing her borders for non resident indians traveling back to australia they are safe guarding their own continent but were i mean australians doing the same thing when in united states the cases were on highest number australia did not ban americans uh, to travel back to australia or even chinese were not banned when china is considered as you know a sort of initiator of the virus okay so india must rethink its foreign policy uh, this pandemic has brought uh, you know a uh, 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 lot of issues lot of challenges to the uh, foreign policy uh, the indian government uh, must rethink and also stop self appreciating and bragging about the achievements which uh, uh, you know uh, they have been doing the health infrastructure can be only developed through cooperation and indian government has been receiving helping hand from germany france and many countries and india have been very lackadaisical instead of putting the budget to the defense expenditure you know uh, you know india must have done lot of work on the health platform yet even now uh, indian government is not putting or pumping money into the health infrastructure lot of foreign aid in the form of concentrators and also many uh, you know medicines and 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 ppe kit masks so many things are languishing into the custom and which has been not released to the hospitals 
and this shows the lackadaisical approach to this shows the lack of political will to fight you know the coronavirus so i would stop here and uh, thank you so much if uh, you know so i have seen from 67 to now we have 37 30 people have left uh, and and i'm sorry that i've taken too much time uh, and if you have any question uh, please do ask or moderator can read their questions yeah thank you so much sir and you to be honest didn't take any time it's the matter that these topics need time to be understood so if anyone has any questions they can put them in chat box and coming to the first question it is from arbaz ashraf uh, sir if you are comfortable then you can turn on your mic and you can ask your question yourself or i can read it for you is it there okay i'll read that uh, all european countries especially usa britain france australia etc were badly affected by corona virus and in the same way india also got affected isn't this pandemic united india with western and european countries to counter the expansionist policies of china okay so uh, i mean you know you uh, you have a sort of you know two set of question uh, first that uh, you know you you are saying that uh, china has a exp expansionist policy and uh, the second thing is that you know rest of the world is uh, uh, united with india uh, well uh, again that what you are saying barely uh, affected by uh, virus those uh, western states uh, that is not true the uh, if if you go uh, in terms of uh population uh you know then uh, i mean there there's a huge loss um, uh, to um, italy uh, to to even france and 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 also of course germany has done much better uh, in united states was affected heavily and is still you know uh, because they have vaccinated the vaccination policy was much better uh, now uh biden administration has said that you know they can go maskless okay that they can remove their mask and roam freely right so uh i mean you know one of the thing is that in international relations um you know most of the uh powerful states you know they um, they have been uh, sort of you know trying to expand their influence right they have been winning over uh to uh, many uh, many uh, you know states and you know china is 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 not uh, untouched from uh, that temptation united states for that matter you know uh, declared after the collapse of soviet union declared that now the ideology has failed we have become victorious right and this is now we are entering into the unipolar world and that unipolar world will be led by united states and united states throughout their history since at least 1945 we have seen that it has been expansionist you know it has becoming turning towards some kind of you know imperial power okay china for i mean you know a longer time was not really engaged into that kind of temptation but china is doing um, you know uh, 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 that uh, 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 kind of uh, thing so rest of the world has lot to do with something called you know uh, 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 it's 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 you know that they want to bargain with united states they want to be with united states and hence they are united is not something that they you, they are united naturally against china's uh expansionist uh, policies okay it is for their own national interest their own self interest okay it is for the matter of survival of their state that they are kind of you know joining hand together and china in no way is posing threat to uh you know those states yet they are joining hand against so it is more of a ideological mooring 
it is more of an ideological acculturation that United States has, um, you know, created, where you know they have created the image of China in a bad light, and hence, you know, uh, you know, whatever China says, whatever China has, uh, you know, uh, to do with its own neighbors, you know, that is considered. For an example, um, I mean, uh, most of the states do not really talk about. Uh, Russia, I mean, you know, European students I'm talking about, they do not talk in radical way that they talk about China. They do not talk against uh, Russia in that manner. Many states have been saying, you know, uh, doing a lot of lip service in the context of Ukraine, but they have not been really uh, uh, been vocal to towards Russia, then towards China, because China is, you know, having uh, some kind of you know dollar uh, 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 amassing where they have been always initiating to counterbalance dollar diplomacy that what dollar hegemony that what United States does. So it is the anxiety of United States which is bringing all the other states that what you are saying the rest of the state unite uniting. Okay, and this coronavirus has been bringing no. I mean, before even coronavirus, John Mearsheimer says the rise of China is not peaceful. Why rise of China is not peaceful and rise of United States is peaceful? Though United States has been engaged into so many proxy war even in the post-91. Okay. But no one talks about it because United States stands for democracy. Stand, United States has legitimacy to go for war. No, that's not true. China, so... Uh, the rise of China can be equally peaceful, but it is the posture. It is rather United States creating some kind of, you know, fear psychosis among the various states against China, where China look like that what United States make those states to imagine that China is like that. Okay. Yeah. So, a, a, yeah. Any Any other question? Uh, the question is from Arbaz Ashraf itself. He says that haven't this pandemic created the negative image of India in world because of the following. One, blaming Muslims for spreading coronavirus and propaganda of media. Yeah. Two, India initially impl impl implemented strict lockdown which led to chaos and crisis, particularly the migrant crisis, deplorable conditions of lower class and fall of GDP. Three, India allowed large religious gatherings such as Kumela. Four, election rallies in five states. And five, India declared it has won the battle against Corona very prior. Yeah, I mean, th that's a kind of comment. And I totally agree with Arbaz that you have uh, outlined uh, those uh, those issues. Definitely, um, you know, uh, of course, I, I because I'm talking about uh, uh, foreign policy issues. So yes, yes, domestic issues are equally important. Uh, for foreign policy, for an example, uh, the the elections which has happened uh, in five states. I mean, you know, of course, you, one union territory and four states, and also, um, you know, uh, 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 Kumbh Mela, which was termed by uh, you know uh, many high courts for that matter. High courts have now started taking uh, decisions, and they say that uh, Kumbh Mela is uh, Kumbh Mela will become super spreader event and in fact many international media uh, platforms they have been saying that today that the number of uh, the, the death uh, in india uh, is nothing on 1st of august uh, you know the number will rise to you know uh, more than 1 million more than 1 million million means more than 10 lakh people will die because of the uh, the the uh, by august 2021 so i could not agree more with you definitely i cannot speak much more uh, about the uh, the entire responsibility was uh, uh, given to tablighi jamaat for spreading of the uh, virus and in fact a to Z, all the media houses were, uh, you know, vocal about, uh, you know, creating that bad image of Tablighi Jamaat. They were not even saying that, you know, those Tablighi Jamaat members 
were gathered you know in markaz even prior to the announcement of a strict lockdown that which you just just said and that strict lock, lockdown uh, in that uh, statement you know narendra modi said that um, you know jo jahan wahi rahe wahi rahe and these people had no other choice to stay back where they were and they were unable to move but people started moving gradually and they when there was they were moving uh, towards their home safe uh, 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 places uh, you know they died uh, in their journey okay and these numbers were not counted as the uh, uh, corona death rather these numbers are just you know accidental deaths uh, right so yes you are absolutely right that these things happen and and we should we should know this The statement is from Dushyant. Modi's foreign policy has been pro-culture. You think that it has been helpful can, to have a mental. Yeah, Devyani, can you speak a little louder? Yeah. Okay, sir. So another statement is from Dushyant. Modi's yeah. foreign policy has been pro-culture. You think that it has been helpful to have and maintain good relationship with other countries in this pandemic period of COVID-19. no what is that cultural pro culture you think modi's foreign policy has been pro culture that it has been helpful to have and maintain good relationship with other countries in this pandemic period uh i'm i'm really not sure about that what pro culture means here uh, uh that that's that's kind of um, you know i mean uh, for me it's it's rather intriguing um the uh, the what pro culture is but uh, yeah i mean can, can you just uh, elaborate little uh, more um mr dushant dushant i am here can dushant speak uh, so i would dushant can you switch on your mic and speak please I think he's not here. Let's. I'm D. Fatin Raza asked how Modi's vaccine diplomacy has left India at the mercy of others. Yeah, I mean, I I hinted towards that that uh, well, uh, we 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 were we were trying to trying to regain that regain that image. Uh, 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 you know, we we were trying to uh, uh, in 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 some way. that many states were uh, writing off many states were you know sort of uh, saying that uh, india is a country of particular concern there is lack of freedom in freedom house index india was uh, going to the nadi level uh, uh, india uh, in the uh, you know several uh, perception index india was going to the bottom and also the uh, the the kind of economy uh, you know which 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 was uh, in a way um, you know trailing back to uh, sort of you know the infamous hindu growth rate um, in 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 that backdrop uh, the vaccine diplomacy was in a way uh, 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 i mean i i would i i have been saying for the um, you know almost two and a half months and i'm i'm again reiterating that uh it was rather a plot by the diplomats uh by by many uh, i mean s jayashankar the seasoned diplomat is the foreign you know i mean external affairs minister of india and uh, i mean many other people would not know the what is the motive of the vaccine diplomacy or what was the motive of vaccine diplomacy s jayashankar has represented in i mean you know india to several um, you know ambassador ambassadorial uh, missions and uh, and and he initiated that vaccine diplomacy though very minuscule uh, i mean you know number of vaccines were given but that was only to put india on the traction of gaining some kind of image okay so that has definitely uh, created um, you know or rather india is on the mercy of uh, other states but the 
the amount of vaccine that india has distributed was not something through which i mean you know entire population would have vaccinated so it was just a kind of face saving mechanism um, you know and and nothing uh, nothing more than that also prior to second wave adar punawala was given information by the government that is stop production only you know start your production in june okay so whatever you have produced you know we will go slow you know and and that in a way uh, was revealed by adar punawala and in one of the interview by the indian express adar punawala said that if i would reveal every information then i would be killed okay so that's a kind of you know the 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 the, the um uh the the kind of secret nexus between serum institute of india and also the government uh, that is uh, sort of you know uh, not raveled uh, to us i mean it, and 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 and, uh, and you know and, and that that's a kind of secret thing uh, so um, and that shows the lack of political will so of course india is on the mercy of other states but not because vaccines were distributed to india and that vaccines that vaccination that amount of vaccination would not have really um, uh, created some kind of um, uh, what to say uh, 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 i mean you know uh, curtailment to the uh, the effect of virus yeah so we mohammad kalimuddin has one one question hello we can take only one question uh, due to shortage of time okay so let me check may i may i ask uh, yeah i mean let yeah if you, if you have like just read out all the questions and i can club it together so that uh, those who have asked should not be disheartened yeah okay the first question is do india should approach towards real politic instead of liberal approach because realism works more than any other yeah who is asking that uh, this is from mohammad kalimuddin very good yeah okay another one is from ehsan javed sir what is the reaction of super power if we were unable to control covid fastly another yeah. one comes from aryan ajax so as we all know that in between march and mid of april there were many political rallies held in west bengal but we didn't see that much of covid cases as we expect why sir obviously it's a good news but i want to know and another was one is from sara fatima she is asking is corona virus a secret bio war another okay. one comes from ela Erat Bhat, Modi was always criticized for having many foreign tours and foreign policies with other countries. What would have been the approach of other countries if these foreign policies have never taken place? How would have India survived in this pandemic if there was no or little help from other countries? And the last one is from Muhammad Al Mahdi, sir. Can you please explain why monarchy is not useful as considered by Democrats? What if a philosopher be considered as a monarch? okay yeah yeah any, any other question aslam you wanted to ask question or shall we uh, okay yes, i have i have a question sir ah. that, uh, we 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 saw that uh, in the period of jawaharlal nehru he followed uh, the non alignment movement but now we are we are seeing that uh, the government of india uh, uh, joining hands with uh, with uh, a quad countries australia america and japan so is that india limited their option with the joint hand with 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 these country or uh, at international level thank you sir okay so very really interesting questions i mean you know the uh, yeah i mean i'm i'm really happy that you know we have a very informed uh, audience uh, today and um, i'm 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 elated to uh, uh, know these questions uh, hard and difficult questions uh, you know uh, such as you know uh, the monarchy and democracy question uh, that can actually take uh, another webinar all together uh, the, the the question about uh, 
uh, that i mean you know there was no cases uh, you know when political rally happened uh, definitely you you know i mean you you all know that uh, the impact of virus and that that because of that reason that from 40 14 mass gathering where you know uh, uh, they there are potential people who can you know uh, spread the virus okay because uh, you know this entire social distancing and all th- those things were kind of uh, 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 norms of the day you know even then political rallies are happening and 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 those people who are there are traveling back to other places so that does not mean that wherever political rally is happening for an example in asansol political rally is happening but lot of people are traveling from say bihar to up to assam to many other political leaders are traveling and many more other you know uh, uh, technical staffs are traveling from uh, those uh, places right and and you know uh, and and these places i mean these people are sort of you know uh, while traveling they are potentially spreading uh, the virus and then of course the uh, i mean you know impact of those political rallies which happened in april you know uh, it started showing i mean you know by the end of april even in bengal we started seeing the number of cases which were to uh, 2000 to 3000 in a day it started rising to 16000 to 20000 by the end of april and in the you know say mid of may today it is near about you know 12000 to 15000 so you know uh, so what i'm trying to say is that wherever political rallies happen you know that kind of you know i mean multiplied the chances of uh, uh what do you call uh, you know uh, is spreading of the virus right now uh, one of the question was about um, you know the the, uh, the the super uh, super power uh, i mean um, and, and devyani can you just read little bit uh, what, what what was that super power yes, question uh, what is the reaction of super power if we were unable to control covid fastly what was the reaction of super power i mean again uh, yeah again like you know going back to the basics of international relations uh, i mean you know super power uh, cannot be termed into a singular uh, you know united if we are considering united states as a super power uh, you know russia claims that you know uh, russia is also super power so we generally say major powers or we say regional powers uh you know because their influence cannot be uh you know on each and every state and not all states have agreement that this particular state is super power but definitely because you know united states has a economic and military strength generally it is understood that united states is a super power now i mean we know that united states or even for that matter russia or china you know these states in a way had those mechanism in place to tackle the virus though they they definitely took uh, time to tackle their research and development and their health facilities you know and and also one of the uh, sort of curse to the uh, india is the uh, you know the, the the population okay i mean we we are the sixth i mean you know i mean i mean you know uh, uh, something something like you know uh, uh, 1.35 uh, billion people right uh, 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 i mean 135 crore people right and of per capita income we are much uh, before many uh, many other states which are smaller states right so we did not have health facilities uh, in place so those super powers were in a way able to tackle uh, you know uh, the 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 uh, uh, the corona virus the impact of corona virus was not that uh, I- impactful in terms of economic losses as uh, we, uh, we we saw uh, because of the strict lockdown and many more other uh, you know uh, activities got stopped 
many industries were shut uh, you know uh, and 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 those industries are now um, i mean you know uh, uh, not non performing assets of the states uh, uh, main and, and by that time many more public enterprises were also privatized um, i mean you know uh, one of the one of the paradoxical thing or rather you know contrary uh, to the loss of uh, you know uh, economic i mean you know uh, economy as well as also uh, the un unemployment rising in india uh, the private players the capitalist you know the players uh, such as uh, ambani adani and many more private players were uh, gaining into 100% profit 1000% profit and within the uh, you know say uh, 2020 since the lockdown started ambani uh, had the net profit of 16 billion dollar right and that is something uh, that out, out of that 16 billion dollar all the uh, you know indian citizens can be vaccinated um, all the citizens can get oxygen all the uh, you know health infrastructure can be improved you know so 16 billion dollar is profited in the sort of indian subcontinent uh, by uh, you know indian taxpayers sort of buying uh, the uh, you know uh, stocks and other products of the ambani and ambani um, you know uh, or, or any other industrialist is not you know uh, 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 sort of uh, uh, providing the assistance as they are supposed to do okay so so if you compare to other states for an example united states or um, um, uh, or or european states you know industrialists have been coming to the forefront and they have been helping to the state by donating their half of the money okay half of the profit and then they have been rescuing their states um, you know uh, so so our philon i mean you know industrialists have been not becoming a philanthropist like uh, they have been doing uh, you know uh, uh, almost two decades before yeah so so i mean that's the lack of lack of uh, will that our industrialists have been showing and that's the kind of lack of political will that our political expediency is showing uh, where they have been not getting uh, the resources from the industrialists as they started after the second wave when they started saying that you know provide oxygen plant opening to hospitals and provide oxygen facilities okay and then only because whenever a state wants to take the sort of you know resources of the private players the state can do that but the state was selling the public enterprises to the private players so that shows the kind of uh, lack of political will and uh, hence the industrialists and capitalists or private players were booming during the pandemic when people were losing their lives and their jobs equally yeah so so i i would end here and i'm really thankful for the informed audience once again and to the uh, political science club devyani sejal aslam arun uh, uh, jangir uh, many more uh, people uh, have joined and uh, i'm i'm hoping that they would be organizing much more um, you know uh, uh, events much more webinar which will be uh, inspiring for all the uh, budding uh, students they would be learning through this platform which is um, you know kind of uh, kind of part of a co curricular activities but it is much more learning than the classroom atmosphere where you can speak your mind and you can uh, you can ask all the difficult questions and we do not have really uh, you know uh, any kind of restrictions and so this is the platform where you learn without restrictions of the uh, classroom protocol or any kind of other uh, 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 kind of uh, you know restrictions so um, do engage in, in in several kind of discussions and i i wish you uh, all the best uh, uh, for the future webinars. Thank you so much.
thank you so much sir and thank you so much audience for asking these questions your questions have made this webinar more interesting and so valuable and so engaging so moving towards the end now i would i would like love to invite over asmat wali to present vote of thanks over to you asmat thank you so hello good evening to everyone present over here i am asmat wali and i am here to present the vote of thanks on behalf of political science club aligarh muslim university so taking this of golden opportunities i would like to thanks our respected chief guest mr parvez alam sir for visiting and enlightening us with their knowledge today's webinar was full of knowledge and interesting and it gave deep insight into the topic and also revealed some interesting facts so your words are really inspirational and we will try our utmost to cultivate the advice you gave us in a real life thank you sir also i sincerely thank all the panel members and the technical team for glorifying this event you all have been exceptionally helpful thank you all for the beautifully arranging this event last but not the least i thank my fellow audience for enthusiastic attending this function without you all this function wouldn't be a success thank you my friends once again i thank one and all whole heartedly for making this event huge success thank you all thank you sir thank you thank you so much